he'll keep well out of the way of the powerful territorial males. Not for him are there showy displays of scent marking and roaring. It is during this phase of his life that a young male will befriend other nomadic males, often meeting them at kills. But there's more to these companionships than just friendship. Once again, the researchers tried a series of experiments, and this is where the stuffed lions come in. They introduced a dummy male lion right into the heart of a pride's territory guarded by a coalition of males. The rigid and unreacting dummy looked a bit inhibiting, so it was reinforced with recordings of a strange male. <coughs> Two against one, the results are predictable, as we have already seen. But what was surprising was the unpredictable. These two males are completely unrelated to each other, but their response to the intruder is exactly the same as if they were blood brothers, not the deadly rivals one might expect them to be. So important is the numbers issue that completely unrelated males will unite to form a more effective fighting team. Research has shown that a single male has virtually no chance of holding a pride of females. But as a team, the males can cooperate to defeat other males. They will share the females and they will look after the cubs regardless of which of them mated with the mothers. Such cooperation between unrelated males is most unusual in nature but for lions, it may be the only way an individual male can pass on his genes. It's now been discovered that many of the world's solitary cats do themselves commit infanticide. Grouping together to defend their cubs could be beneficial to them. So why are these cats not social? For most cats, group living, however desirable, would just not be feasible. Some, like the cheetah, tackle small prey and cannot afford to share the meager rations. Others, like the leopard, live in areas where there are few large herbivores, insufficient to support a group of big cats. But for lions, after 20 years of research, the pieces are finally falling into place. Of all the factors that have been investigated, it is now clear that only three are important for group living. The capture of large prey, the defense of cubs, and the defense of territory. What enabled the lion to become social seems to be a combination of its size and the availability of food. The Serengeti, with its huge herds of grazing animals, provides a superabundance of food for predators. But many of those herbivores are simply too large to be brought down by any of the big cats, except one, the lion. 
and once captured they can often be shared. So lions can exist here in very high numbers. With no constraints on the food supply, the evolution towards a social way of life for lions was not only possible, it became necessary. A lioness needs a large territory to provide her with safe den sites and permanent food and water. The best way to hold that area against so many other lions is to gang together and it is best to do that with relatives. By living in stable related groups of mothers, daughters and grandmothers, lionesses ensure the maximum transmission of their genes and form the solid foundation on which lion society is built. By banding together, they are able to keep out wandering single males and so reduce the disruption caused by takeovers and cub killing. Their numbers enable them to own, defend against other females and bequeath to their daughters a well-defined territory that contains all the essentials of life. The males, spectacular fighters and lovers, help guard the territory and father the cubs. But they join the royal family for only a few years before being forced into exile. The males have no permanent claim to the land or the crown. That belongs to the lioness, the queen of the beasts. Thank you.